Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Gather Your Party, the Tavern Edition. In this game, you'll be playing at the local tavern, and you're going to be creating your party of quest goers. Quest goers attempting to gather the most liquor and consume it. You'll have certain quests available that will need certain types of party members that will gain you reputation as you're able to drink people under the table. Now, all at the same time, be careful of how many drinks you drink, because after the fourth drink, ah! you're sloshed, and you're going to pass out. And that is basically the idea of the game. You're attempting to gather as much reputation as you can, playing down as many characters as you can, and utilizing these fantastic unique cards uh, for events that can trigger when you're drawing cards from the deck, or when you want to play them after gathering them from the deck. Will you be able to gather more reputation before you pass out than your opponents? Find out in this wonderful little drinking slash non-drinking game. I'll talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, our review. To begin the game, you'll go ahead and take your go drinking deck. You will then take out the card called Last Call. Take that card out along with the last nine cards, shuffle them up, and then you can go ahead and place them down on the bottom of the deck. And make sure the deck is shuffled beforehand. Then you'll go ahead and take the quest deck. Take this quest deck and shuffle it up and then place out four quests with their reputation on the bottom, available for everybody to see in kind of a two by two grid. Each player is going to be getting one of these cards here, which is a player reference, along with five cards from the main deck. Additionally, you're going to be having these little drinking tokens. These are going to eliminate you if you get four of them, so go ahead and place them within reach of all players. If you're playing with more than four players, you can use the expansion for the five to six expansion pack. And then of course you'll have the rule book and an extra little card that involves tagging and following on Instagram. After that, you're pretty much ready to go. The player who is last to be, uh, mm, the last person to have a hangover will be the person who goes first and play will continue from there. The game is actually quite simple. Uh, you're going to have event cards in your hand and you're also going to have patrons. There's also some unique little things like you can get reputation cards as well, but you will be taking two actions on your turn. And there are two things that you can do. You can either A, draw a card from the deck, or B, play out a card from your hand. When you draw cards from the deck, if you draw anything that isn't an event, it will go into your hand. However, if you were to draw an event, it's going to be instantly played. Anytime you draw an event card from the deck here, you're going to play it unless it says something like add a card to your hand. Anytime you add a card from the top of the deck to your hand, you do not have to play the event until you want to. So that is basically how drawing works. Draw a card, play the event, or keep the patron. Patrons can be warlocks and scouts and rangers and rogues and all that wonderful thing. This is gonna be what make up your party. The other thing you can do is place cards down. You have four spaces for your party, where you can place down your warlocks and scouts, etc., etc. In these four different spaces, you're probably going to want to have different types of the classes, and you're going to try and match them with the reputation that you have or trying to develop with the tavern uh, on these little cards here. So, for instance, one of them might say you need a warlock and any other card. Uh, so, playing these down, you can only have four. And if you ever have more than four, you'll have to discard one of them. Additionally, you could choose to play events. Sometimes it will let you heal drinks. Sometimes it will give you drinks, etc., etc. There are a bunch of unique cards that change the game in some fun little ways. Whenever you get a drink, you'll be taking one of these tokens and putting it in front of you. And whenever you give a drink, you'll choose a player to take one of these tokens. Whenever the cards say, you'll have to do the drinking aspect of the game, which is handing out these little tokens here. And you're basically going to try and get to the four rep before anybody else. Well, how do you get rep if all you're doing is A, playing cards, and B, drawing cards? Well, if you would like, you can basically forego the two actions on your turn. Instead of drawing two or playing two or doing one of each, you could actually remove both actions on your turn, and you will spend your patrons, and you will gain the reputation based on the patrons that you acquired. So in this case here, I have a warlock and another class, and there is a cult next door reputation that will give me one point, which I need four of, and a reward, whatever that reward is. It might say something like add a patron card from the discard pile to your hand and then discard a card. Uh, these cards will go in front of you whenever you successfully gain them as assuming that you choose not to do anything on your turn, and then a new reputation card will come out onto the field. And thusly, when your turn is skipped, it'll just go to the next player's turn. And that's basically how the game is going to go. 
draw cards, play cards. Two actions per turn, or choose not to use either action to simply discard your patrons and gain new reputation, and new reputation comes back on the board. There are, of course, some unique little twists and turns. Some patrons are considered legendary patrons. These guys will stay on the field. They have some legendary effects that are both positive and negative for you, but you can utilize them when it comes to gaining reputation with these quests that you're trying to undertake. Be aware that if you hit that fourth marker of drink, you're going to be out of the game, unless a card says otherwise, and just enjoy your time in the tavern. So I'll be honest, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect from Gather Your Party. I didn't know if this was just a full-on party drinking game that was like, you know, very low strategy, very high in drink uptake. Um, and so when I got into it, I started playing it and reading his drinks. And I'm like, oh, I guess there's gonna be a lot of drinking in this game, that kind of a thing. And then we sat down and played it and I had my sweet tea. <laughs> And Callie had her uh, ginger ale, and we actually didn't need to drink in the game. This is not actually a game that requires you to drink, but it does have the ability for you to do so. And even so, it's reasonable. Uh, this game is actually a full strategic game based around party placement, hand management, and executing events when you can uh, as you add them to your hand. Of course, there are random times where you'll draw event cards and have to use them whether you like it or not. Um, and of course, depending on the party that you have, there will be ways in which you can keep your party members, exchange party members with other players, and steal cards from their hand. While being wary of your four drink limit, you're always able to heal when you get certain cards or send drinks to other people, thusly keeping you below that four threshold. Uh, it's a really pretty quick and clever little game. It only plays 10 to 20 minutes. Yeah, it's a 10 to 20 minute game, and that's pretty accurate, especially for a four player. Uh, if you get with more players, it takes a little longer, and there's this five to six expansion. At the very bottom of the deck, there is this kind of last call card that kind of resets things and allows you to kind of go again, uh, and it all works out very well. Uh, this, of course, has a little bit of that take that. It has tableau management, and it has the ability to, like, you're trying to secure certain types of reputation cards. There are unique cards in the deck that can give you reputation, things that can be stolen. It's very, very like you think you're going to win, and then bam, the tides have changed. And now somebody else, and the tides have changed. There's a little bit of luck involved in this game as well, depending on what cards you get. Uh, but a lot of it actually comes down to the different type of cards that you play. It was actually really, really well made. This is a really cool drinking game because, yes, you can drink drink for this game as well. Whenever you are given a drink, you will you could choose to take a drink and a token. And whenever you um, like lose a drink or, or, or heal or whatever, I don't know, I guess you can fill your, your, your cup a little bit more. But it, it, the drinking is not like, take a shot, take a shot, take a shot. I've played some of those games where that's pretty much the entire thing is all about. Uh, this one is kind of like you can incorporate drinking into the game and it's themed as a drinking game, but uh, on its own, standalone as just a game itself, it's a lot of fun. I loved choosing out the different types of patrons because when you play them, you'll get special abilities or they have passive abilities, especially the legends. You could get something like the Pirate Queen or the Mountain. The Mountain has the ability to make you like, I believe this one is no drink maximum, but there are certain rules and there's like drawbacks to that. And the Pirate Queen is while she's in their party, you can only draw cards by stealing them from other players' hand. If you can't, you lose the game though. So you have these like really powerful cards that also don't have to be or can't be discarded. These cards can stay in play as you use them for rep because normally your party will go into the discard pile, obviously progressing the game and allowing the flow to work fairly well. Um, but some of these guys can stay and people will steal them. And they're very, very useful as they hit the field. Uh, there's a lot of really cool aspects about this game. I love the ability to draw cards. And when you draw a card, you might happen to get an event card. And if you get an event card, that instantly gets played. But if you're able to gain a reputation from one of the quests here, you can actually uh, potentially add cards from the deck to your hand. And when you add cards, these are cards now that you can utilize later. They're special abilities that will function when you want them to because sometimes these cards might not be good. Maybe you have an amazing hand and you draw an event card and all of a sudden you have to switch hands with your opponent. Whereas putting it into your hand is going to allow you to utilize it when you don't have the right cards that you want. Or perhaps if somebody steals a bunch of cards in your hand, now you can go ahead and get those cards back. So there's like this unique little twist to, to drawing and adding cards. I really like that. Uh, there's a uh, wide uh, variation of the different types of classes and what they do. You have like the brawler that lets you take a drink, the wizard that will allow you to discard it to stop an action, you have the scout that lets you look at cards in the drinking deck, and so many more. You even have necromancers that can let you bring back patrons from the discard pile and put them back onto your field as an action. 
Each of the different types of reputation quests will give you different varieties of the classes that you might need, as well as your reputation and a special reward. Usually they involve adding cards to your hand, but sometimes you can gain the Pearl of Possibility. Whenever you steal a card, you can steal two instead or you can choose to send drinks with some of them. Obviously the ones that are easier than the others will still give you the same amount of reputation, which is one. And I believe pretty much every card in this deck is one or two rep, except for one of them. There is the classic tale, a barbarian, a rogue, a cleric, and a ranger. It gives you three rep if you can get it, but you have to have this exact setup. And you also get a huge reward as well. So most of these are one to two rewards uh, and or rep. And you can get that third one as well, which is pretty much a game winner if you can pull it off. But yeah, this is a full-fledged card game. It's got that tableau management. There's kind of a, a danger as to your threshold of drinks that you can currently have. All the pieces are very nice. I love these little tokens. These are not stickered on. They're actually like... I guess they're like printed on here and it feels good. These are great little tokens to move around the game board. Uh, your different party deck is wonderful. All the different chalices, which are used to represent the different classes, work and actually look to be like something one of those type of classes would drink, or at least kind of it, it like shows what a, that class kind of is. The mountain has got the wooden big goblet. The pirate queen has got the, it's kind of like this metal goblet with jewels and gold all around it. And the wizard has this kind of like Largan flask that's purple. And it just, it just works super well for me. I really, really enjoyed this game. Now I haven't played this while drinking. I rarely drink, uh, but this would probably be a good one for me to get in on with my friends who like to drink because it's something that's not too crazy about the drinking aspect and a lot more about the strategy, how you Obtain your party, how you keep it, how you use the cards that you get, the type of reputation that you gain that gives you benefits and bonus bonuses, and all the while, everything's great quality and a lot of fun. This is actually, of the smaller games I have played, uh, one that I'm going to be definitely keeping in my collection. I'll be utilizing it in certain instances. It may have a niche aspect as far as the fact that it's themed as a drinking game, but the fact that it can be played and you don't have to drink and it can just be enjoyed and there's a strategy involved. It's not all luck and randomness, but when it is, it's great. It is it, very, very nice. I do highly recommend Gather Your Party. This was a wonderful little card game and definitely something you can you should consider picking up. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Gather Your Party. If you're interested in these drinking type of games that don't involve, don't have to involve you drinking as well as it being a little bit strategic, then this is one I, I'm, I'm very satisfied. Uh, you can go ahead and like the video if you'd like. I do appreciate it. And go ahead and check out the link in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this game and funded on Kickstarter not too long ago, as well as go ahead and go to unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live stream is 6.30 p.m. PST on Wednesday and Sunday among the different types of platforms. That's pretty much all I got for you this time, guys. And as always, I look forward to gathering my party with you next time.